Someone needs to give this man some sex ed. I think we're supposed to be laughing with it and not at it, but I might be laughing at it. Saying I want to feel you milking me is the least sexy thing you could possibly say to anyone in any given situation ever. <laughs> like every man is already my enemy when I meet them. So I'd rather you be my friend. Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and welcome to this video. So I recently uploaded a video reading five sad books to see if they would make me cry. And if you've seen that video, you know that it was pretty rough for me to get through. <laughs> and many of you had the great idea and suggested that I try doing another experiment, but this time I read five happy books that would make me laugh or smile. And so I decided to take some of your suggestions for happy, romantic, funny types of books. And I went on Instagram and asked you all to give me your book recommendations and for the most part people basically just recommended me romance books and so I decided that uh, because I couldn't find like five just like happy books that people were recommending over and over again and I wanted to pick like the most popular recommendations that people were giving me I would read the romance books basically all of these are rom-coms anyway so I thought that it would work it's in the same vein they should make me laugh they should make me smile <laughs> so that's what I did I decided to read five of the most popular romance books they're the most popular in general I see these all the time online, but they are also the most popular of all of the recommendations that were given to me personally from all of you. So yeah, um, these are all pretty popular books, and I say this in the video at some point too, but I will just preface it here. If you really like a lot of these books and you don't want to hear anyone say anything negative about them, just maybe don't watch the whole video. <laughs> if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know I'm not one to shy away from a negative opinion on a popular book. I never have been. And that has definitely not changed about me, but I have noticed this new surge with like the growing popularity of like book talk and booktube and the community just getting bigger and bigger, that people are starting to get really upset again when you have an unpopular opinion about a really popular book. And if you don't like their favorite book, people are getting really mad all over again. And I've dealt with this for like the past six years, so I'm like very much used to it at this point, but I'm just letting you know. I may have a very negative opinion of one of your favorite books in this video. So if you don't want to watch that, just don't watch it. You don't have to listen to me say everything I don't like about it. Just don't put yourself through that. Just like in my last video, this video is also going to be completely spoiler free. There's like maybe one or two sections in this video where I go into like very mild spoilers about one of the books and I put the cover of the book on the screen during those times so you can just mute me for like a minute. But besides that, like there's there are no spoilers in this video so you can watch it if you haven't read any of the books and you still plan to. Also quickly before we get into all of the books, I do just want to remind you all that my reading journal, The A Clockwork Reader Reading Journal, is out now. It is available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, other booksellers, Book Depository if you want to buy it internationally if they ship to you. If you are looking for a reading journal to document the books that you read and you like journaling and you like reading, this might be the perfect thing for you. So just a reminder, links are in my description box as always if you would like to order one for yourself. Now without any further ado, let's get into the five popular romance books that I read to see if I enjoyed them. All right, so I started off with what is arguably the most popular book in this video, I feel like this one is incredibly popular. It is all over TikTok, it is all over booktube, Instagram, literally everywhere. Everyone keeps recommending this, and that is none other than The Love Hypothesis. First things first, we need to address the fact that is pretty widely known at this point, and that is that this book is published Raylo fanfiction. If you don't know what Raylo is, Raylo is the pairing of Kylo Ren and Rey from Star Wars. And if you didn't know, this book started out as fanfiction of those two characters. If you look at the cover and then you look at the actual characters, you can tell. <laughs> like that just is Adam Driver. I do not have a problem with things being published fanfiction if they're good, but essentially this is just a rom-com about this um, grad student and a professor, and no, she is not his student, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and the book has like an academic setting, but yeah, we'll get into it and then you'll see all my thoughts. <laughs> okay, so I'm like halfway through the love hypothesis right now, and I feel like y'all are lying to me about this book. I don't know how much I'm gonna like this. <laughs> My current feelings are that there's just like not enough going on and also like not enough chemistry and also the writing isn't really my favorite it's a little bit like cheesy but not in like the fun cheesy way that I like just like just cheesy 
And I don't know, like I'm just not feeling it. The main trope in this book is definitely fake dating. And like, while I like fake dating as a romance trope, I think I prefer fake dating when the characters already knew each other before they really started fake dating versus like, we don't really know each other, but we're gonna just start fake dating. I don't think I like that as much. So that's definitely part of why I'm not necessarily having the best time with it. Also, this book is very much like tell and not show. Like they constantly tell you that Adam is an ass, but like they barely kind of show it to you. You know what I mean? Like other than him being kind of like harsh to his students, he's not like an ass. Which by the way, like this book repeats like the same description for like each character. Like he constantly just calls her a smart ass, which I get is like the pet name in this. Like I get it. I get that that's where we're going, but like he doesn't call her anything else. Like they just, they reuse the same phrases over and over again. Like she calls him like an ass like all the time. And like, I would like different descriptors. Other thing, this book is obsessed with him being tall. I am having a hard time conceptualizing their height difference because she's supposed to be like 5'8", I think. And she constantly talks about like how tall and big he is. How tall could he possibly be if he's like three times her height, which is what they said at one point. Cause that's a lot. He's like basketball player, like tallest basketball players in the world type of tall, if that's the case. Like I know it's being exaggerated at certain points, but like, I don't know, the book is very, very obsessed with this height difference thing. <laughs> I don't know, it's like not even like making me really laugh or anything. Some of the lines are like really cheesy and like, I don't wanna say like poorly written cause I feel like they were intentionally meant to be written that way, but it's just like, it's a lot. Like, I'm sorry, this line just like took me out. This fact was not remarkable in and of itself as in academia, every position above the graduate student level, Olive's level, sadly, required some degree of assness in order to be held for any length of time with tenured faculty at the very peak of the ass pyramid. Like, <laughs> like I get that it's supposed to be funny, but I don't think I'm laughing for the right reasons. <laughs> I think we're supposed to be laughing with it and not at it but I might be laughing at it. <laughs> the writing is just, we'll say not my thing. Also not gonna lie, I'm really not feeling the main character. Like she's literally just the epitome of YN in every fanfic. <laughs> she's quirky and optimistic and bright, but she also has her like tragic backstory. She's of course like thin and slender and frail, which they have used to describe her multiple times at this point. And she's just so much smaller and tinier than he is. Like there's this one scene where she like sits on his lap and then he's like, you weigh nothing. And it's like, great, <laughs> who cares? This book is like, unfortunately, very much making me feel like I'm not a romantic, even though I really feel like I am a romantic. I don't know, maybe this just isn't romantic to me. I think that's the case. <laughs> like truly though, she just like kind of doesn't have a personality. Also with Adam, like it, there's not a lot going on there for me. <laughs> His entire personality trait is that he's tall and big and that he's an ass. That's literally it. Like nothing else is really going on here. So I'm having a hard time. I don't think I see what everyone else sees in this. That's okay. I'm glad people have fun with it. I wish I was having more fun with it. I also think the fact that I know that this is Raylo fanfic is deeply influencing my feelings about it too. I wish I didn't know because I feel like I might enjoy it slightly more. I think I'd still be kind of bored, but the fact that I know it's Raylo fanfic is just another level of like, this is a lot for me because I hate Raylo. Like I hate that as a ship. I've never understood why anybody wanted them together. I literally hate Kylo Ren. I don't even like Adam Driver as like an actor that much. It's just like a lot of things that are not for me. So I'm not really surprised by the fact that I am not really enjoying this very much. But yeah, and just knowing that it's Raylo fanfic is like not helping. I'm still only halfway through, but halfway through checkpoint, I'm really thinking this is not gonna end the best. You know, we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully it improves. Okay. <laughs> the smut is bad. I, I literally had to stop in the middle of this scene because it's bad. Listen, I've read a good amount of smutty fanfic, okay? Like more than I should like care to admit. And I've read my fair share of bad smutty fanfic too. You know, like the really bad ones where you just, you know, you're just reading this because like it takes up time <laughs> because you're already like 300,000 words committed into this like 500,000 word fic and you're gonna get through the shitty smut scenes, you know, just because you are too invested at this point. Honestly, some of those are still better than this. This is 
appallingly bad and I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I thought we'd at least get to like the scenes where they finally like get together and then I'd be like, you know, like this is kind of fun. Like I actually feel something for them a little bit now and like I kind of want to see where this is going and all that stuff and like maybe the smut would be entertaining. It's not. It's not entertaining. I wish I had at least one good thing to say about it. I don't, unfortunately. It's giving me the ick. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like the second this started, I was like, ooh, uh, yikes. <laughs> I feel like people are gonna think this because like, I, I don't usually read romance or I don't read smut. Like, I mean it when I tell you I've read a lot of smutty fanfic. You think that like everybody on TikTok who's like currently obsessed with like talking about fanfic and like smutty spicy books is like like a new thing or something. No, like we've all been doing this for years. Like I've been reading fic on AO3 since I was in middle school. Probably to my own detriment, but I have been. So I've read a lot of good smutty fanfic and bad smutty fanfic and I can tell you that this reads like really bad smutty fanfic. It's very disappointing. If the smut was good, at least you could excuse like the rest of it being a little bit boring. The rest of these books with like smutty scenes better have good smut. Like if I hear him describe her as like tiny or small one more time, I'm gonna lose it. And if she describes him as like giant or big one more time, I'm gonna lose it. Like I just, <laughs> I know that that's like a very common trope. It's in like so much romance and so much like smutty romance especially, but like I'm really tired of it. I thought we were like past this as the trope that's in like everything. That's a thing. Like if it was just in some things occasionally, sure, but like it's in everything and I'm really not, not feeling it. Other things happened. The book has definitely picked up from the first half. Oh my God, I only have like a quarter of this left. I didn't even realize how close to the end I am. What else is supposed to happen? They're just gonna have sex and then like finally admit to each other that they have feelings for each other and like it just ends there. Like, oh, this is really upsetting and really disappointing. I really thought that this would be at least a little bit more fun, but it's not. <laughs> Honestly though, I should have known where this was going when the whole scene started with the line, he could fit her entire breast in his mouth, all of it. Like, <laughs> And I don't want anyone to think or for this to come across as me like making fun of smutty romance. I like smutty romance, as I've said many times in this video already. I don't think that it's cringy or weird or like something to make fun of. But like if it's poorly written, I'm gonna make fun of it. Cause like, y'all, I'm sorry, that's not it. <laughs> I will say I don't read as much like romance in terms of like romance books. Mostly I read fanfic, but I'm counting this as fanfic cause like it straight up reads like a fan fiction. It's structured narratively exactly how fan fiction is structured. It does that like thing where they break up like parts of the sentences and put like a period after like two or one or two words and like list them down. I don't know how to explain this. I'll put an example on the screen for like multiple examples where they do this in the book. It breaks apart the words of a sentence and like puts a period period after each one and like separates it on a different line to like emphasize what they're saying and it's like such a fanfic thing to do and that's not necessarily a bad thing but it's like one of the signs that like I know that this person is a fanfic writer and like you can just feel it and you can tell and again that's like not a bad thing again because I read fanfic I like fanfic but I like good fanfic <laughs> anyway I'm gonna finish this I'll update once I'm done and then we can talk about all of my thoughts, even though I think I've probably said the majority of them at this point. I finished it. I finished The Love Hypothesis. Um, I didn't like it. <laughs> Here's the thing. I get why other people would enjoy this. It was like simple, lighthearted for the most part, apart from the fact that like sexual harassment is like a theme in this story and like uh, a major event plot point of the story. So like be aware of that before you read it. I didn't know when people had first recommended it to me, but thankfully somebody did warn me and I'm grateful that they did warn me. Besides that, it is a fairly lighthearted, generally happy and like simple story. Like there's not a lot of angst or drama or anything and it's really fast to get through. As far as like good things I can say about it, that's about it. I don't find it like offensive or anything like that. I just personally don't think it's for me, but I can understand why others would have a good time with it. Now on to all of the reasons why I personally don't like this book. <laughs> I think this is probably the thing that makes me dislike this book the most, and that's the fact that the characters are so bland. They don't have personalities, they don't have interests or hobbies outside of being a 
scientist like he's literally just a professor and she is a grad candidate like and that's it that's literally it they don't exist outside of that like little bubble that has been created for them they barely even have like insecurities like they have some but like there is no time in the book for us to even delve into them whatsoever and honestly there was just like no character to develop you know what i mean like they literally like she was literally just a woman in stem and like that was her whole personality <laughs> she didn't have anything else except for being like insecure skinny and like small <laughs> which is like every single yn in existence and then adam also no personality outside of being broody and an ass but like we're just told he's an ass like you never even see him be that mean to anybody or anything and like it's just there is nothing it there's nothing there there's nothing there so the character development characters in general bland lacking i needed something and i got nothing <laughs> the next thing that i wasn't a fan of the smut it was dull it was dull it was a little cringy or a lot cringy from time to time there were some lines in there that were just not the best. Also, in that whole scene too, like, there's just this one section where she like low-key comes out to him as basically demisexual. Like, I'm not trying to label her because we don't get any kind of label for her, but she basically explains to him that she like doesn't feel attraction for anyone unless she really, really knows them very well, which is essentially demisexuality. Um, and she's like going into this entire explanation, like in the middle of them, like, having sex and it's weird because like we don't really address it again and like the thing that made no sense about that to me was that like they barely even speak that often in this book honestly like they don't even have that many like moments together and she falls for him like so fast like this entire book takes place over the span of like one month barely and they've been fake dating for like only a couple weeks before any of this even happens and i just don't get like what there was to fall for because like none of the relationship was even like developed we have one scene where she opens up to him about like her family life and stuff so there's like a little bit of an emotional conversation between the two of them but like not a lot you know and so like it all happens really 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 fast which is why i say i feel like this book needed to be like twice the length for us to develop anything i don't know like we wasted all of our time talking about i don't even know what because like nothing happened like literally just nothing happened i would say that there was like a bunch of build up and no payoff but there wasn't even build up like we didn't even build up to anything you know like we just start off with this like fake dating lie and then like everything that follows is so obvious in the way where it it's only fun to read that if you are reading a fanfic of a ship that you already know and like, which is why this reads so much like fan fiction. It felt like both the main characters had no personality because they were supposed to have the personalities of Kylo Ren and Rey. And when you take that out, then they're literally just like shells of people who are kind of going through the motions and you've given them like an occupation or like one interest or something and like one insecurity. But the reason that fan fiction works when you do something like an AU like this is because you already have an emotional investment in those two characters and you know their characters. So when um, Adam in this book does something and you're reading this as Kylo Ren and Rey fan fiction, when he does certain things you can rationalize the reasons or the emotions or the behaviors or whatever behind it because you know it's Kylo Ren's character, if that makes any sense. I don't know how well I'm describing this, but that's what makes reading fan fiction and AUs especially so much fun and so nice it's because you already have those set characters you know them so well so you can put them in any situation and it's still fun to read because they still have personality but like when you don't have that like set knowledge of who their characters already are you don't have that emotional investment in their characters and then you take that out of it you take them out of it they're gonna be like lifeless shells of people like they just don't have personalities anymore and i could feel that the entire time i was reading it and i think that's really what took away from any kind of enjoyment i could have in this book it was so boring to me <laughs> and i feel really bad saying that because i know how well loved it is but i think i've learned that i'm never going to read Raylo fanfic or anything that is Raylo fanfic adjacent ever again not my thing i think that's the main thing i've taken away from this book this book is not my thing it wasn't meant for me i know this is the first First book that I read so far in this video but I have a feeling that the um, overarching theme of this is just going to be that I'm not necessarily the biggest 
romance fan. But who knows, because I love romance is the thing. I think I just don't like it in this context. Like, is it just the fact that this book isn't written in the way that I personally enjoy? Or is it that I just don't like singular romance books where the characters get together and have sex within the first like 300 pages? I like the yearning and the angst. Like, you need to build up to them even like holding hands, okay? And then we can get into everything else. But like, I want the yearning, I want the angst, and this lacked both of those things completely. So yeah, love hypothesis. Not my favorite. I would give this solid two stars. Not the worst thing I've ever read, but I don't think it's particularly good. I'm just not a Raylo stan, and I don't think that this book is for me. I don't think this book is only for Raylo stans. I think you might like it, even if you don't know who Raylo is. But if you do and you don't like them, I don't think you'll really like this book. All right, moving on to book number two. I read none other than The Spanish Love Deception. Out of all the books on this list, I feel like this is one of the ones I was the most curious and excited about. Not necessarily because I thought I would like it the most or that I thought I would dislike it the most or anything because I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that everyone was talking about it and everybody was raving about it and I just wanted to know what the hype was about. Plus this one was highly recommended from all of you. This is essentially a fake dating enemies to lovers, rivals to lovers. I'm sure everyone already knows what this book is about but if you don't it's about this girl who needs a date to her sister's wedding in Spain and her co-worker offers to be her fake date for this wedding and that's essentially what the whole book is about. <laughs> How am I going to talk about this and not? <laughs> okay, okay, first things first. We are going to ignore the fact that my eye is super red. I don't know what's wrong. I woke up this way. It's been tired and itchy all day, so we're ignoring that fact. I've also just currently, as you can tell, been crying from laughter because of the Spanish love deception. <laughs> I'm reading the Spanish love deception. Very close to the end at this point. I, I have many I have many thoughts to share, but I'm currently, I'm in like chapter 23, I think that's where I am, and I'm reading the like smut scene, okay? <laughs> and I thought, I said that the smut in the love hypothesis was bad. <laughs> If you like this book, just maybe don't watch this <laughs> because like, I don't know how much I can hold back. This started out as like, you know, pretty average, a pretty average smut scene. But the scene progressively went from like standard, we're gonna include the classic lines that are in like every smut scene, you know, like, is this all for me? Which is in like every single one, all the time. I don't know how we can read a heterosexual smut scene without that line being in it. Maybe one day the people will find the will, but not today. I need to preface this by saying, as I've said many, many times in this video already, I have read a lot of smut, okay? This is not coming from somebody who's never been exposed to this type of book or like content in general, okay? This is, this is not coming from someone who is inexperienced, okay? I know, I know how smut goes. I have read more than enough of it. This might just be the cringiest line, the, the worst thing I've ever read in any smut scene. He literally... <laughs> I can't do it. I can't say it. He literally says, I... <laughs> he literally says, I want to feel you milking me, baby. <laughs> Is that not objectively so cringy? Like, I'm sorry. Honestly, like, I'm not even sorry. That's objectively bad. <laughs> like, it's just objectively bad. Come on. I literally can't get over this line. I have been laughing at this for literally the last, like, 15 minutes. It took me so long to even set my camera up and start talking because, like, I have just been laughing at that line. <laughs> I keep stopping and laughing. Unfortunately, not in the way the book wants me to. I don't think I'm supposed to be laughing while they're having sex. Like, I don't think that's supposed to be happening. But I am cackling. I'm having a great time. Like, I don't think this is why I'm supposed to be enjoying the book. And I wouldn't say I'm enjoying the book, but I'm having a good time laughing at this. This is honestly, <laughs> honestly, really funny. And I'm sure there's probably stuff that's in some like other smuttier books that is like worse maybe, you know, or even at least objectively as bad. But that, that is so funny to me. It is so funny. 
Um, and we should talk about it. <laughs> there are things about it that I actually enjoy more than the love hypothesis. Like I think that the characters have more development. Maybe that's just because the book is like around 100 pages or so longer. So we have like more time. Also because the characters already knew each other before they like started fake dating. I'm comparing them because they have really similar concepts because they're both like about fake dating. So far I am 60 pages or so away from the end still so there's still some time. So far I think this one might be worse. <laughs> I went into all of these fully intending to enjoy them and hoping to enjoy them. It's not my fault that I don't like them. <laughs> it's lines like, I want to feel you milking me that make me not like them. I just really think this isn't my thing. Like, it's just, it's not my thing. I found out that he was like a former football player and immediately my brain was like, ick. <laughs> this book basically starts off with them going on some fake date where Aaron gets auctioned off as if this is that one episode of One Tree Hill where they literally auction off these teenage basketball players for charity. Like what era are we living in? <laughs> and the writing style again is not my favorite. This one definitely reads less like fan fiction than The Love Hypothesis did. But honestly, part of me kind of prefers some of the um, like writing style of the love hypothesis compared to this one. But yeah, like, I don't know. I just, I really don't think that this is my thing. I think that's like the main issue. It's like, I'm not gonna say not a problem with the book. It's definitely partially a problem with the book, but it is also that this is not like my thing. So I'm not like gonna go into this necessarily with a high chance of enjoying it because it's not the type of thing that I personally would enjoy. However, I do think it also has some glaring issues. <laughs> Once again, just like in the love hypothesis, if not emphasized more in this one, she's like tiny and small, so much smaller than him and he's so big. The number of times she has said big body in this book has been insane. And there are just like so many lines that are like this one line she says, and his unbelievable out of this world ad where the upper body was so flawless that it made me want to weep. That makes me want to weep. I'm having a little bit of a crisis. Like maybe this book is just too straight for me. <laughs> maybe that's the issue. And then like there's this other part where he ends up like telling her about his like tragic backstory that's literally not tragic whatsoever. And then later is talking to her about how he likes Disney movies. Like she finds out that he likes Disney movies and his favorite movie is Up. And she literally says in her subconscious, it's first person, she literally says, this was too much. First he opened up about his childhood earlier today and now this. Like the bar is in hell ladies. <laughs> I can't, I can't, it's, I'm gonna hold my tongue. You know, it's fine. I, like I said, I think I've just accepted this is not for me and that's okay. Again, I get why people would enjoy this. Like it would be fun to read if like this is what you're into, but like, I don't think this book is it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like there is definitely better romance than this. I'm gonna go finish this. Just needed to update and let you all know that I'm losing my mind over that line and I am never letting anyone who recommended this book to me live it down <laughs> because you all need to take accountability for this line. You told me to read this and you told me it was good and you told me that knowing that this line is in this book. It's hilarious. Thanks for the laughs. Thanks for the memes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go finish it and then I'll update you all. I swear to God, if he calls her baby one more time, Elmo's gonna sue. The way that I'm liking this book less and less with every line that I read. <laughs> okay, someone needs to give this man some sex ed because first of all, he didn't even go down on her before like everything happened, but there was very minimal foreplay in this. And like, you know, that's never good for a smut scene. Like, we're not here for that. Second of all, he literally said he only brought one condom because like he was hoping that they would like get together, you know? But he literally said he left it in his bag because it had been in there forever. You know they expire, right? Like they probably just used an expired condom. That's stupid. <laughs> this is what I mean. I hate it more and more with every single line I read. <laughs> Practice safe sex, friends. Practice safe sex, because this isn't it. This is teaching you bad things. Don't do that. Don't use old condoms that have just been lying in your bag forever. He literally says, but I'm not going to lie to you, a big part of me hoped it would, and maybe that's why I left it in. It had been in there forever anyway, so I thought it wouldn't hurt. It would hurt. It would hurt if it's expired. Did you check the expiration date? Because I don't think you did. 
if it's been in there forever, that seems like a long time, sir. He also called her spider monkey. Like, what is this, Twilight? Honestly, Bella and Edward's honeymoon was better than this when he literally broke their fucking bed. <laughs> That was better than this. Hello, quick brief um, editing Hannah interlude. I just realized that there are actually like several references to Twilight in this book and also a scene where Aaron breaks a bed when I just like referenced them breaking the bed in Breaking Dawn. So now I'm thinking that this was at some point, maybe before it was published, some form of Twilight fan fiction. Don't know if that's true, but if anyone can confirm that for me or find any um, evidence to, to say that that is true, let me know. I I'm very curious now because there are so many Twilight references in this now that I'm looking back on it. And I feel like it, it has to mean something. Okay, I finished The Spanish Love Deception. I don't like it. <laughs> the book just got like progressively worse and worse. So first it took forever to get into their relationship and not in the fun slow burn way all the time. Like at first it was okay. Then like we just kept repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Like I feel like this book really needed an editor to like go through and cut out maybe a hundred pages um, because it was really repetitive. And then we finally like get them together and whatever. Then all like the smut and everything happens. I'm gonna get into some like mild spoilers talking about this really quickly so I will put the cover of the book on the screen if you want to mute me if you don't want like any kind of spoilers but then after that point it felt really rushed because we immediately go into I don't even want to call it a third act breakup because it's not even in the third act it's like 20 pages before the end of the book and like it's not a breakup breakup but like they have a fight and whatever so you know like we have some drama but like nothing is going on for like the entire book and then suddenly in 20 pages they're like everyone in the workplace knows she's reliving all of her trauma now they're not on speaking terms anymore and his dad is dying like all of that happened in like 10 pages <laughs> it was insane <laughs> and the pacing of this book was just so off to me so yeah I, I i didn't really enjoy that aspect of it you know i don't really know how to like review this precisely because like you know how i feel you know i don't really like it very much if you really liked this just like skip over this part of the video because i'm gonna like just talk about what i don't like because that's why we're here right these are my opinions and if you don't agree with them go read the book and enjoy it and live your life i'm gonna enjoy sitting here talking about everything i didn't like about it. So let's go through everything that I annotated. First of all, we have this whole quote where she like blurts out to him. This is at the very beginning. She just like blurts out to him her emotional like baggage and her like body image issues like out of nowhere. They like don't like each other at this point and like they're still enemies, which by the way, it's a stretch to call this enemies to lovers. They are not enemies. They just kind of don't like each other very much and she holds like a grudge against him and he has like gotten over that a long time ago and has liked her like basically this entire time and she's just choosing to ignore the fact that he's interested in her. Catalina's really dumb, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was rough. It was rough to read because she is not smart. But at this one point she just like out of nowhere just like confesses all of her like deep inner turmoil about her like body image issues and stuff and she's talking about how some guy had compared her to Sofia Vergara in like a mocking way and she says having half the curves or wit that woman has wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Not that I'm unhappy with my body. I'm okay with being the way I am, normal, plain, and I was. Everything about me was pretty standard where I came from. Brown eyes, brown hair, on the shorter side. Not thin, but not fat. Wide hips, but rather small bust. We were millions of women that fit that description, so I was average. Not a big deal. It wouldn't hurt losing a couple pounds for the wedding, but I don't think whatever I'm doing is working. This girl has like some serious body image issues and there's like a lot of disordered eating in this book. I definitely would put a content warning on it for that because like 100%, like at the beginning especially, she's just like dieting a lot. She like passes out because she didn't eat and like just know that if you're gonna read it. Um, I feel like at times it gets probably like a little bit fat phobic and there's just like a lot of diet talk, a lot of body image talk. There are like periods of this book where she doesn't eat and then suddenly she's like oh whatever and then like basically I wouldn't say binges but she just like indulges in like eating a lot um which is like a very common disordered eating behavior so like it just wasn't pleasant to read about that in here um and it would have just been nice to know that that was like a theme I don't even want to call it a theme it was just like present in the story um and honestly very unnecessary to the story it didn't add anything to her character she didn't really have a personality, she was just dumb. Like, that's pretty much it. Oh, here's a fun, cringy line. This is when they're at the auction, when he's being auctioned off. 
I think I mentioned this earlier, when he's being auctioned off on the first fake date that they go on for this charity event, and she's asking like what the bidding is for, like what they get out of like bidding on the man that they're bidding on or whatever. And she says, when The Bachelor is acquired, what is he acquired for? I mean, it's not like bidding for a boat or a Porsche. I guess you cannot take a bachelor for a ride realizes what she says and then she's like not like a ride in a yeehaw kind of way i just said that because one takes cars for rides like for a spin but not men in that way at least i have never taken a man for a spin not in a yeehaw kind of way <laughs> i don't think i need to say anything um i think that speaks for itself oh this is one time where i just annotated one of the million times where she refers to him as having a big body she's obsessed with saying that he has a big body that he's huge that he's large that's a very common thing i just get a little bit tired of the whole big body large body his giant hard body like chill <laughs> it's okay <laughs> oh then we get into a couple of like moments that give me like red flags like i don't know again you do you this is my opinion he spent a lot of this book trying to convince her that she needs him like he said so many times like i'm gonna prove to you that you need me you need me you need me you need me like to me that's red f that's a red flag it's a red flag if a guy was like you need me i'd be like no i literally don't need you like get away from me <laughs> reading this has really made me rethink a lot of things about myself I've, i'm having lots of realizations okay anyway oh the number of times that he says baby like the pet names in this drove me fucking crazy like it was so much i never want to hear someone call someone baby ever again in my entire life immediately just like an ick i cannot stand it now i have never really been a fan of pet names in general but now this just took it to another level like it got so intense by the end that like every single time he spoke to her he was just like okay baby yeah baby let's go baby like okay whatever baby like i can't just never say that word around me ever again i can't take it then of course we had some like classic like claiming language during the sex scenes um which is very sarah j mass very omega verse of the book love that representation <laughs> and then after that their relationship just gets so so cringy and corny and just <laughs> unbearable it was a lot it was a lot anyway that was the spanish love deception <laughs> what did i learn from this former football player gives me the ick i despise the pet name baby <laughs> absolutely cannot stand it never trust a guy who takes you to a charity function where he's being auctioned off as the first date saying i want to feel you milking me is the least sexy thing you could possibly say to anyone in any given situation ever always check and make sure that your condoms are not expired and just overall i think we need to raise our standards for smut that's what i got out of this but yeah spanish love deception easily one star easily my least favorite book i read in this video and i just wouldn't recommend i don't really have much more to say about it i feel like my goodreads review kind of says it all all right and then moving on to book three i read people we meet on vacation by emily henry people we meet on vacation is a friends to lovers romance that follows the story of these two characters who've been friends for the span of like I don't even know, 15 years, like a really long time. And the two of them like to travel together a lot. So they go on vacation with each other a lot. And we follow the development of their relationship after they've had like a bit of a falling out. All right, okay, hello. I have started reading People We Meet on Vacation. I really like it so far. <laughs> I'm so glad that I'm finally enjoying something, but I am genuinely actually enjoying this book so far. So I'm currently like a third of the way through the book. I'm about a hundred pages in. I'm so happy that I don't have something like bad to say again. <laughs> And I'm also just happy that I'm actually having a good time reading something in this video for once. I actually had to put the book down for a couple of days because uh, there's an aspect of this story that was just like a little bit too relevant to my life at the moment. So it was making it like a little bit hard to read, like, you know, too real, like I could relate too much. And so I put it down for a couple of days, but um, I'm picking it up again and continuing to enjoy it. I like the writing. I like the characters. They actually have chemistry 
what a concept. <laughs> and like, I'm actually not like a friends to lovers person. I like friends to lovers. I don't hate it by any means, but it's not like my favorite trope. But honestly, the older I get, I think the more and more appreciation I have for friends to lovers because I loved enemies to lovers when I was younger. But like, as I get older, I have no interest in someone being my enemy. Like I want to like you, you know? <laughs> like I just want to like you from the beginning. <laughs> like every man is already my enemy when I meet them. <laughs> so I'd rather you be my friend. I know the bar is so low, but the fact that they actually like enjoy each other's company and like like each other as a person adds so much to this story. Like the other books, like they didn't know each other. They didn't like care about each other or anything or really like each other very much. And if they did, it was like a secret or we don't even like get to see it at all. So like, why would I care? But with this one, we actually get to like see their relationship and like how it developed from the time they met until like their current situation now. And so like we see their relationship build, we see them go from like acquaintances to friends to really good friends and obviously eventually lovers because they're gonna get together because that's the point of this book. But like you see their relationship build and like that's the thing that I think was missing from the other two books for me, like nothing about their relationships were built up. Like there was just no build up whatsoever. It was just one second, they don't really like each other or they don't really know each other very much. And then all of a sudden they're having sex. And it's like, <laughs> I need something in between there, you know? And this is really giving me that. And it's so nice. Um, it's really honestly very well written. I like the writing, it's funny. Even a little bit cheesy at times, but not like too cheesy. It's in like the good way, you know, the fun way that's enjoyable. It's very easy to read. And I mean that as like a compliment. I don't hate the main characters. I actually like the main characters. Again, Again, the bar is so low, but like I genuinely like them. We are not obsessed with the whole height difference thing in this book, which is nice. He is taller than her and they have pointed that out, but it's not like a main focus of the book so far, at least. They don't point out the fact that he has like a big body or that she's like tiny and frail and small. We haven't had that mentioned like 75 times already. You know, like they said it once and like we moved on. I don't have a problem with the whole height difference thing. I have a problem when you mention it every five seconds. So far the main characters also also have personalities which I deeply appreciate and they have like interests and hobbies and other friends and stuff like that and like families and siblings like you know what I mean like they're fleshed out characters and I like it it adds so much more depth to the actual story and makes me care about the romance a lot more so yeah I'm very much enjoying this I actually think I will really like this book by the time I finish it I'll update with more thoughts as I have them um, otherwise I will update once I finish it and let you know my final thoughts all right okay I finished People We Meet on Vacation. I really liked it. Can we get a round of applause for the fact that I finally like a book in this video? It's been rough. It's been rough. But this one, this one was good. To be honest, I don't really have too much to say about it. When I first started reading the book, um, the beginning was just a little bit slow, a little bit cliche, not necessarily my favorite thing, but not awful by any means. And then once we got like towards the middle and like things started picking up and their relationship started to develop a little bit more, I started really liking the book. It went from the beginning, the book being like a solid like probably three stars for me and then towards the middle I was like this is four stars like this is so good if this ends well this could be like a five star book for me like I could like it that much and to be honest by the end like it kind of tipped off a little bit for me so this one ended up being around more of like a middle kind of um three to four star range book but I still really liked it I liked the characters I liked their relationship I will say um Poppy wasn't my favorite main character but she wasn't my least favorite main character definitely not close to that. <laughs> I've noticed this trend in at least the romances I've read in this video where the main character always has this very specific um, outlook on life and like personality trait where she's like super bubbly and like outgoing and talkative and stuff like that. And like all of these main characters are kind of like some variation of that. And by far Poppy was the best one. Like she had the most depth. She was the most like a real person and not just like a trope. But still sometimes the like, optimistic, outgoing, like super talkative, bubbly personality isn't my favorite thing. And that's fine. Like I don't mind reading it every once in a while. I've just read three books back to back where the main character had that basic exact same personality. So it's getting a little bit tiring. <laughs> had I read this not having read The Love Hypothesis and Spanish Love Deception right before it, I might have liked Poppy a little bit more. So that's more of just a timing of when I read this thing, less so of like a critique of her actual character. I think it was totally fine. I think I'm just tired of seeing it. As far as Alex goes, I really liked him. He very much felt like a real person. He wasn't like super cheesy um, and he also wasn't creepy or weird. He wasn't like really 
unrealistic or anything. What I'm trying to say is he had a personality that was something apart from just being tall and broody. <laughs> He's definitely tall. They did mention it a couple more times since the last time I talked about it, but again, nothing like the first two books. Um, so it was totally like fine. I, I could handle it. But he actually had a personality. Like he had desires in life and he had fears and anxieties and just like, you know, things that people and characters should have, unlike our first two main male leads who lacked all of that in my opinion. And I just like genuinely really liked Alex. I thought that he was a good love interest and I understand why Poppy was in love with him. I understand why Alex was in love with Poppy. Like it was just really well written. Um, there were so many lines in here that like really just made me feel a lot. I thought it was honestly very romantic. I really liked the writing. I will say that too. I loved the writing in here. Like truly, um, Emily Henry is a great writer and I definitely want to read Beach Read as well because I have a feeling I would like that one too. And honestly, anything else she's written. It's so easy to read and that's fully a compliment. Um, she's clear, concise, gets her point across, and also has a lot of emotion and depth in her writing as well. Even in something that's like a simple story like this, it still had substance, you know, and I really like that in her writing. I, I just think she's a really good writer. And I think that definitely helps with making me enjoy like the characters and the plot a lot more, obviously. One of my favorite quotes in this book, if not my favorite one that was in here, that just like, like really, really hit close to home is this one that Poppy says, she says, it's possible that all those little moments that meant so much to me never meant quite the same thing to him. It's possible that he didn't reach out to me for two full years because when we stopped speaking, he didn't lose something precious the way I did. Like that one, ooh, it like really really hit. And there were just like moments like that throughout the entire book that I think were just so well written and just were really impactful. The ending was definitely like a bit um, rushed in my opinion in some ways. Like it wasn't rushed, I just wish that it had been more fleshed out like the beginning of the book had been. I've noticed that as a trend with a lot of these romance books. The ending is just like very quick, like they get together and then all of a sudden it's just like okay we're done now. I understand how like Sometimes it can get boring after the two characters get together and it's just like the angst and buildup that people are reading for. Sometimes I want like a little bit more at the end. I feel like that's probably why it wasn't like an exceptional book to me or one of my favorites or something like that. Other thing, this one is much less like smutty. I wouldn't really call this book smutty at all. Like there are sex scenes in it, but it's not smutty. Um, it's very different. So yeah, definitely a different type of romance book. If you're not looking for something that's like smuttier, this one might be more your thing. Despite the fact that like I did not like the first two books that I read that were smuttier, I actually like romance books that are smutty in that way. Sometimes over ones that just have like fade to black scenes, but like only if they're well written smutty scenes. And we've still yet to find that. I've still yet to find a good smutty scene in any of these romance books. I'm not counting this one because these were not the same as the other ones. Like I said, these were more fade to blacks. So those were definitely more explicit. So yeah, hopefully the next book has at least one decent smut scene because I'm still on the hunt for that. Um, apparently it's tough to find. But yeah, people we meet on vacation definitely enjoyed it. I would give it 3.75 stars. Not my favorite thing I've ever read, but definitely something I like and I would definitely recommend it as a romance book. By far my favorite one I've read in this video so far. Would recommend it if that's what you're into and if this is something that you want to read, I do think this one is very good. Okay, and then moving on to book number four, I read One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Out of every book on this list, this is the one that I was by far the most excited to read because it was already on my TBR. I'm not gonna get too much into the synopsis because um, you'll see once I start reading it, but it's basically a sapphic romance novel about this girl named August who moves to New York and she meets this girl named Jane on a subway and it's about their relationship developing. And yeah, just, you'll see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue that One Last Stop had like a time travel slash paranormal component to it. Nobody told me this. <laughs> to be fair, this is 100% my own fault. I literally just didn't read the summary of the book. I never read the summary of like almost any book. So I never really know what's going on. So it is my own fault because then I went on Goodreads and I read the summary for the book and it literally tells you in the description, she's stuck in like the 1970s and she's like kind of a ghost. We don't exactly know. But like it's in the summary of the book. It's not even like a spoiler. I had no clue. <laughs> I was reading this last night and I was like, oh, this is like just gonna be some like, you know, basic, they live in New York City, romance, they met on a subway, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden they were like, I think she's a ghost. And I was like, what? <laughs> Literally what? Anyway, that was very shocking, but honestly a pleasant surprise because I'm not gonna lie, I was really bored 
really, really, really bored. I was genuinely tempted to start a different book instead because I was not feeling it. I think I'm currently on like chapter eight. I'm like more than a third of the way through this book at this point. And it's finally starting to get interesting. It was really slow at the beginning for me, not gonna lie. I've read Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And before I started reading that, I really didn't have expectations. I didn't think I was going to like it very much, but I ended up surprisingly really, really loving that book. And it was so much fun. It was so funny and super entertaining and I gave that five stars like I genuinely really like it and probably of all the romance that I've read that's probably my favorite one and I have high expectations for this one as well but at the same time I have a feeling I won't like it as much because part of the reason I found that one so entertaining was just the like out there wild premise of like the prince of England and the first son of the United States being in love with each other it was just like so over the top and that's what I really liked about that book and that's what made it so much fun to me and so this one like obviously isn't going to have that to the same degree but now that i know that it has this like paranormal like time travel-y component to it that definitely makes it way 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 more fun so i think i might actually enjoy this a bit more now in like the second half i will say i'm not feeling very much for the romance um just because it feels like really insta lovey like she sees her for the first time and instantly it's just like oh my god I love her and like I get that like that does happen with people like it's it's an experience that definitely does happen but it's just it's less fun for me to read about because as I've said multiple times in this video I like angst I'm still optimistic I still feel like I could enjoy it again for now um, just completely shocked by the fact that this had like a whole like time travel-y component to it that I literally just didn't know was even a part of the story. That was very shocking. It was like 1 a.m. and I was lying in my bed and all of a sudden they were like, I think she's a ghost. And I like, I thought I was dreaming or like hallucinating. It was a lot. Anyway, um, glad I know now <laughs> at least. I will update once I'm done and hopefully I end up liking it. Cause so far I feel like this one does have some potential. I don't think this is gonna be like disastrous like the first two. <laughs> we're headed on an upward trend with these next few books, these last few books. So People We Went On Vacation was like a solid start. Hopefully this is better. And then the last one I read is the best. I'm just hoping that I at least like this one. That's that's like all, that's all I'm asking for at this point. <laughs> okay, before we even get into anything, I just need you all to um, see my shirt because this is the greatest article of clothing that I own. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. So it's actually been a couple of days since I finished one last stop, but I didn't realize that I hadn't finished filming um, my thoughts on it. Like I never did like a final thoughts clip. So I'm doing this now um, and you're gonna see me look exactly like this in a later clip once I finish the last book, but just ignore that. <laughs> but one last stop. I didn't love this. <laughs> I think it's a solid book and I can understand why you'd have a good time reading it. I like the writing. I like some of the characters sometimes. <laughs> I like that it is a sapphic romance, but I think that the execution was done poorly. My biggest problem with this book is that because Jane is like just stuck on the queue, like she literally can't leave this space essentially. And like we really only ever get to see her in that one environment. She doesn't feel like she really has a personality. She doesn't feel like she's very well developed because she's literally like like stuck in time or like whatever she is. I don't know. I'm still unclear about whether she's a ghost or not. She's not a ghost, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like really hard to connect to the romance and connect to her as a character when she's just like stuck in this one space and there's like no room, both literally and metaphorically, to develop her or to develop their relationship. So it just fell flat to me every single time they would have any kind of interaction. It just didn't feel really possible to like build towards anything. Like they meet and then all of a sudden they're they're just like in love but it's like why they don't know anything about each other it's just like very insta lovey but not just because they like fell in love at first sight it's insta lovey because it just felt like the relationship was so underdeveloped and so it made it just really hard for me to connect to them as characters and just to their relationship in general and that honestly makes me sad because of all of the books i read on this list this was the only queer romance and i expected to like the queer romance 
the most, honestly, especially after the way the first few books were going. And I wish I liked this more. I just, like I said, I feel like it was really hard to connect with the characters and they didn't feel as fleshed out as I wanted them to be. I just felt like a little bit removed from the story and I didn't feel like immersed. Like it just, it wasn't very fun in my opinion. And it was nowhere near as funny as um, Red, White and Royal Blue was. And one of my favorite things about that book was how like funny it was. So at the very least I was expecting to like laugh in this, but I just, I didn't really think it was very funny. And again, didn't really feel any kind of like connection with the characters or their relationship. So yeah, I'm very disappointed. I wish I liked this more. I don't think it's bad by any means. Yeah, I would probably give this like a solid three. Like if you're looking for like a sapphic romance to read, then I think like you can pick it up. And I don't think it would be like a waste of your time. I just don't think it's like the greatest. I wouldn't particularly like go around recommending it. I feel like I need to read some more sapphic romance books and see what I actually like because I feel like this one will fall even lower once I read some other ones that I enjoy more. The smut was also like okay in this. It wasn't cringy like some of the other ones. That was definitely completely fine in this book. Honestly one of the best parts of the book in my opinion. I will say there were some times though where I was like is this sanitary? And if you've read it you know what I'm talking about. It wasn't like the actual like smut. It was like where we were, you know? <laughs> but besides that, I think it was completely fine. Again, just like a little bit of a letdown, not really my favorite, not close to as bad as some of the other ones I've read in this video, but definitely not as good as People We Meet on Vacation in my opinion, in terms of just like story, character dynamics and um, relationship dynamics and stuff. So overall, I just wish I had enjoyed it a little bit more, but again, definitely wouldn't put it as low as some of the other books that I've read in this video. All right, and then finally, the last romance book that I read was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This is another, not enemies to lovers, not really rivals to lovers, but kind of like mutual dislike to lovers story. We follow our main character, Chloe, who after a near-death experience has this like bucket list of all the things she wants to do in life. And then she moves to a new apartment and meets this handyman named Red. And the two of them don't really connect and don't like each other at first. And obviously then the relationship develops from there. I just got out of the shower. That is why my hair is wet and looks like this. So please ignore that. But I just finished reading Get a Life, Chloe Brown. And I didn't update like while I was reading it or anything I read it pretty quickly. I read it in like two sittings. It was okay. To be completely honest with you, I feel like I'm just burnt out from reading so much romance. And it's like getting to me because like I don't feel like reading romance anymore. So it's influencing my enjoyment of these books at this point. And it's not fair for me to like judge the book based on the fact that I don't feel like reading it right now. So that's not like where my rating for this or anything is going to come from because obviously like I'm just not in the mood to read this right now. And I think I have learned fully at this point with this being the final book in this video, I'm not a romance person. I think I just don't like like contemporary romance novels. I think they're just not my thing. I think I thought they would be my thing because I like romance. I like romance in my other books. I like reading fan fiction. I like stuff like that. But I have noticed from doing this experiment that um, romance, like just contemporary romance, especially like smutty romance, is not the same because it's not setting out to do the same thing as like romance in a fantasy book, even if it's like smutty or not. It's just, it's not the same. And I just don't think it's for me. And that's like completely okay. I, I have no issue with that. I'm not going to like every single genre and that's completely fine but I think I'm just a little bit disappointed because I expected myself to enjoy this genre more. That's not to say I'm like completely opposed to ever reading a romance book again. I think like I said I'm just tired of reading five of them back to back to back when I'm really in the mood to read like a lot of other things that are very much not romance related. So I just think reading too much of it back to back has not been the best for me and just has been tainting the experience a little bit. But to talk about Get Alive Chloe Brown, I actually did enjoy the book. I think that of all of these books, the smut in this one was by far the best written. I finally found one where like the smut was fine. Like it was okay. I didn't think it was cringy or weird. It wasn't like uncomfortable to read or anything like that. So as far as this goes on the smut rating, this rates like the highest for sure. And I'm very happy that finally one of these books, the smut was fine. <laughs> and when I say fine, I mean fine for me. Like everyone is into what they're into and like that's completely fine. It's pretty subjective, except I will forever stand by the fact that the Spanish love deception smut is really bad. That was just bad. <laughs> but to be honest with you, this one I just found like a little bit boring. And again, I think it's just because one, I think romance just really isn't my thing. And two, because like I said, I've been reading so much romance that I don't feel like reading romance anymore. Maybe if I were in a different mood and I really just felt like picking up like a fun, simple romance that I could easily get through in a day, I would pick this up and I would recommend it for that case. I really enjoyed the representation of like chronic illness. And I thought that that was really well done. This book just 
felt a lot more um, like well-rounded as a story than I think some of the other books that I read in this video. Personally, I enjoyed People We Meet on Vacation more than I enjoyed this one only because I just liked the like tropes in there more. They were just more of my thing. But apart from that, I feel like these two books are pretty equal. This one's definitely like smuttier for sure. It's just more explicit. People We Meet on Vacation has like fade to blacks. This one has like full on smut scenes. So it's kind of just like what you prefer to read. But I feel like I would put them kind of in the same boat. They're a little bit different obviously, but I feel like in terms of like quality of writing and character development and stuff, I definitely enjoyed these two the most. The story was honestly cute. Like I liked the characters. They definitely had personalities apart from just being like short and small and then tall. <laughs> it was nice to have like representation in like different body sizes. Like Chloe is fat and like I liked seeing that representation there instead of her just being like tiny and frail and fragile like every other main character I read about. And honestly, I just think it was like a good romance. If I was ever in the mood to continue reading some more romance, I would definitely pick up the sequels for this series because again, I think it was well written. I think that it was funny at times and I think that the characters were well fleshed out and it was just like entertaining despite the fact that I was like so tired of reading romance, it still held my attention, which is saying a lot. So like if I were in a better mood, um, I feel like I might've even enjoyed it more. But yeah, I, I still think it's like a solid book. I would rate this like a solid three stars. A lot of people think when I give a book three stars it's like a bad rating. Three stars for me is not a bad rating. Three stars means that like it's not my favorite thing I've ever read but I see the merit in it and I would recommend it in specific situations to specific people based on what they feel like reading and I think it's just a good book just not my favorite book. And this one is definitely a solid three stars. I think it's good. I'd recommend it if you're interested in reading a romance book. And I think it was well written. Honestly, just glad I ended on this note and it wasn't just another like really boring or cringy book that I ended up hating. I'm glad I actually enjoyed it at least a little and that it is one that I could recommend if someone was like, I need a romance book to read. What's one that you think I would enjoy? I would I would say Get a Life Chloe Brown or People We Meet on Vacation. Of everything I read in this video, I would recommend those two as romance books to read. But there you all have it. Those were the five popular romance books that I read and all of my thoughts on them. But yeah, this was a really interesting experiment. Honestly, in some ways, this was a bit more difficult for me to get through than the sad books video, only because I feel like I was just getting super burnt out reading all of the romance books because all of them have such a similar structure that I felt like I was reading the same thing over and over again whereas with the sad books they were all very different from each other so I had more variety so I was a little bit less bored even though I really hated some of those books way more than I hated some of these books I just think the fact that it got so repetitive made it a little bit difficult but nonetheless I think it was still a worthwhile experience and I'm glad I did it so if you have any recommendations or suggestions of other types of experiments you would like me to do other types of books you would want me to read please send them my way I definitely plan to continue doing more of these types of videos because it's honestly pretty fun for me to watch back. <laughs> Even if I'm not really liking all of the books, it's still pretty fun. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have any more romance suggestions based on like my comments in this video and what you think that I would like, please let me know because I don't want to like write off romance. I don't think I dislike the whole genre and I think what's popular right now isn't really my thing so I just need to find whatever those romance books are that are more of my thing. Yeah, if you have any suggestions based on what you think my taste would be, uh, please let me know because I would like to read some more. <laughs> but if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media to keep up with what I'm reading or what's going on in my life. All the links are in the description box as always, but thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!